Hello, my name is Chris Cordova. I am the Financial Wellness Coordinator at Foundation Communities. Thank you for joining me today. We're going to be talking about using credit cards um, in this section and in this video. So as we continue to um, go on with this, just kind of keep in mind that your credit cards, there's a lot of misinformation about them. So we're here to kind of clear a lot of that up. Um, credit cards can create a lot of anxiety with some people, but if used responsibly, they can be a great financial tool. So that's kind of what we're going to review today. And just so it kind of cuts down on the anxiety and just gives you a little bit more insight of how to look at your credit cards and how to, you know, just kind of how to use them properly. So as we go further, um, our key takeaway for this first section is know how credit cards work so you can more effectively shop around for one that meets your needs. So we're going to go ahead and break it down a little bit and just say, what is a credit card? So initially, it's a revolving line of credit. It's a convenient way to buy goods and services. You can buy now and pay for it later and it gives you a limit on how much you can borrow. Yeah, there's, and that's referred to as your credit limit or your credit line. And that usually goes um, how you qualify based on your credit score and your past credit history. And you must pay at least a portion of the bill every billing cycle. That's referred to as your minimum payment. So um, just kind of our key takeaway here is your credit limit or your credit li your line of credit. That's the amount that you need to, that you're kind of limited to use. So you don't want to go over that um, because there would be fees associated with going over that limit and that you must pay a portion of your bill every month, at least to making a minimum payment there. Now, like I had mentioned it before, it's, we should kind of, not look at credit cards as additional income or additional money, but more as a financial tool. It's more of a way to be responsible with the amount of money that people are lending out to us. So right here, it's referred to as an important financial tool and it can build evidence that you are credit worthy. It's going to build a credit history for you. It can help you pay for emergency expenses depending on what situation you are in and you need to pay for something, you may not have the cash on you or the cash or the money in your account where you could swipe a debit card. This gives you another option for you to pay for emergency expenses. It's a convenient option for purchases online or to buy over the phone. It also gives you a right to dispute erroneous credit card charges. So something that does not look correct or maybe that was an incorrect charge, you can dispute that. And a right to dispute certain charges for goods and services that weren't delivered as agreed. Now, these are some other options that sometimes get confused as being credit cards, but they're gonna be charge cards. Those are sometimes associated with restaurants or specific stores. Um, which could be separate because they're not necessarily being reported or building credit on your behalf. Prepaid cards, also known as stored value cards. So these are kind of, these are cards set up with specific financial institutions where you continue to put money on the card and then you pay at will until there's no money left. I think um, like it's, similar to like a gift card that you continue to put money on. But like I said, those aren't necessarily building credit. Like if you were to get an HEB or grocery card and, you know, continue to put money on that until you spend it down, that's not really building your credit, which is whole, the whole idea behind a credit card or one aspect of a credit card. And the other thing is a debit card. So a debit card is, a, so is connected to your checking account but your debit card is never building credit. It's never getting reported to any credit bureau. So your debit, so you can use your credit card for years and years and years and years, 
but that is not necessarily going to build your credit score or help you in the long run if that is a goal you have in mind. Now, there is the truth in lending disclosure and credit card rates and fees vary greatly. Federal Truth in Lending Act or the TILA disclosure, it's a written disclosure. Creditors must give it to prospective credit card customers and it contains important rate and fee information. We're gonna go ahead and talk about your rates and fees and these are kind of just some terms to listen out for. So there is the annual percentage rate also referred to as the APR. It's a cost of credit expressed as a yearly rate. It's also a fee that you're paying annually in order to use a specific credit card. There's the penalty APR, and that's an increased rate if you don't pay your bill on time. Then there's also your interest rate. This is the amount that you're being billed in order to use the specific card and it's based on how much of a balance that you're carrying every month. So sometimes that's a fixed rate. So there, you know, when you sign up, it's going to be a fixed rate of about eight, 15 to 18 to maybe 25 percent, or it's a variable rate, which that's the rate that can change on you. So you would much rather prefer to get a fixed rate. Um, these are just some terms to get familiar with. And um, definitely when you're looking at terms of cards of one that you'd want to use and just so you're aware of how you're going to be billed every month or the fees that can be taken or be placed on your card monthly. Now, there are usually methods that credit card companies use in order to lure you into using their credit card right away. These are called low introduction, introductory APRs, annual percentage rates. And so they give you a teaser rate, which is gonna be a low rate at the beginning. Um, so then the rates kind of change later on. Um, there's last for, they last for a limited time, at least six months. For example, there's 0% interest on purchases for the first 15 months. Then a variable APR of 15.49% to 25.49%. So that's changing on you, but as you're, you're being lured into using that credit card because you're saying you're agreeing to going with the 0% interest early on. You're gonna, the more you kind of get familiar with these terms, the more it's gonna make sense. Now, another aspect of using specific credit cards are the rewards associated with them. Examples, there are rebates, points, airline miles. Um, you have to know how to qualify for these specific um, add-ons and understand how to maintain the rewards. Will rewards cause you to overspend? Probably, that is usually the point of these reward miles. The credit card company definitely wants you to use their card as much as possible. Um, because ultimately the higher balance you use, the more money they can make off you. Consider fees when you look at rewards and yeah, definitely see if there's any fees associated with these rewards and definitely shop around. So when it comes to this aspect of it, um, it rewards are great. And you know, especially when it comes to airline miles, these other things, if that's something that you're gonna use regularly, but also keep in mind that you are in the best situation if you use a credit card and you're paying off the balance every month. By doing that, you are not paying any interest rates um, or you're paying a very low interest rate. The good rule of thumb is to not carry more than 30% of your credit line to carry that on your balance at any given time. If you are given a credit line of $1,000, you want to keep that under 30%. So try to only spend up to $300 and pay down from there. That's how your credit is going to continue to build and you're going to be successful with using that specific card. Now, other important terms are is your credit limit. That's the maximum credit you can use. Each creditor has its own standards 
and they're gonna probably consider your credit history, your current income, and your outstanding debt that you may have like with your car loan or with a student loan, other credit cards, these are all gonna be factors when it comes to creditors extending you more credit with their specific financial institution. Now there are grace periods, that's the time between your statement is issued and when your payment is due. Creditors do not have to give you a grace period though. Other features and products and services, there's customer service features, how often you can get somebody on the phone to help you, um, additional features for free, example, an extended warranty on some items that you may purchase through that credit card, additional products or services for a fee, examples, payment protection and credit monitoring. These are some services, not all credit card companies, but most of them are offering at this point where you're able to monitor your credit score every month. Now, there's two types of credit cards that you can get, and they're gonna be the unsecured and the secured credit cards. So your unsecured credit cards, that is you're putting down no collateral, you are putting down no money in order to use that card. Now your secured credit card require collateral. So you're gonna keep money or collateral in a dedicated deposit account. It may be equal to a card's credit card's limit. If you pay your balance regularly by the due date, you are generally can improve your credit history and score. That's the whole purpose of getting a secured credit card or that should be your goal you want to improve your current credit score or establish a credit score and your current history. Usually easier to qualify for than an unsecured credit card. It's usually easier because you're putting money down. The money that you're putting down is your collateral and that's saying, if I'm not successful with making my payments, the organization is gonna use that, the financial institution is gonna use the money I put down as the means to repay my, my debt. So we're talking about secured credit cards. Once again, and secured credit cards are the credit cards that you're putting a deposit down or you're putting down collateral, collateral with, and they typically have lower credit limits, usually about $500, maybe like 250, 500, it wouldn't be, over a thousand, it would be rare. That'd be over a thousand because you'd have to put a thousand dollars down. Now, some people apply for secured credit cards if they are unable to get unsecured credit cards. So, if you have not yet qualified for a for a secure unsecured credit card, you're probably going to go the secured credit card route. We can help them build their credit history, and that's ultimately what you want to do with that. You want to build your credit history by using that. Um, secure credit card. Now, when it comes to applying for a credit card, there's going to be several options to find one, especially the different offers available. Financial institutions and retail stores, they tend to have very robust marketing. They're going to be a little bit more, um, more motivated to get you qualified. There's um, websites you can go to where you're comparing. Uh, um, the terms of various credit cards and you're i'm sure you've already experienced receiving various mail credit card offers in the mail and um, that's probably going to continue but um those are very they look very attractive especially when they're coming at the same time that your bills are coming in because it gives you you look at those off offers and it's like a way to pay your bills. But definitely be leery and check the terms and make sure that that is something that you want to enter into. Now there is an opting out of pre-screened offers. You can use this number here, which is 1-888-567-8688. Or you can use their website as optoutprescreen.com. Um, now here are some key terms in the application process. There's the credit card applicant, that would be you, the person seeking credit. 
the creditor, the financial institution that would be extending credit to you, the individual credit, that's the, the specific account, the joint credit, that's a card used between two people, and there's an authorized user, so I could have a card and I authorize an additional person to use that credit card. So remember the key takeaway here for section one is you know how credit cards work, so you can more effectively shop around for one that meets your specific needs. Now in section two, we're gonna to go to managing your credit card. Now, the key takeaway here in section two is credit cards can be convenient, but manage them carefully to keep costs down and avoid damaging damage to your credit. Ultimately, like we said in the first part, credit cards should not be seen as free money, additional income, but they should be seen as a financial tool. So as a financial tool, you want to use that in your best interest by keeping your costs down. You don't wanna be spending fees that, you, that are not necessary. And you also wanna build a good credit history, a good credit score while using these credit cards. So when it comes to reading a credit card statement, um, there's gonna be the account billing cycle, and that's the time period covered by the statement. It's usually a month's worth of time, usually about um, 30 days, 31 days. Um, it's usually about a month. Now your account summary, and that's gonna give you information on what your previous balance was, what your new balance is, your credit limit, how much you have to spend, and your credit that you currently have available. So therefore, if you have a credit limit, we'll go back to $1,000 and you have spent down 300, you have a balance of $300, your, your available line of credit would be about 700. Now, when it comes to your payment information, you wanna take a look at what your new balance on that card is, the amount that you owe, the minimum payment that is due, that is the amount that you still need to pay for that specific card, when your payment is due, that's gonna be your payment due date. Just a side note on that, that is very important because that is about 35% of your credit score, as we mentioned in one of the other videos. Um, so making your payment on time, even if it's the minimum payment, is extremely important. You definitely wanna keep up with what your minimum payment is and make sure you're, you're very diligent about making those minimum payments on the due date. Um, what your late payment warning would be, what those fees associated with the late payment warning would be. And there, you, some credit card companies are very quick to charge you a late fee. So you definitely want to pay attention that you're not paying additional money by being one day late. And then there's the total minimum payment warning. Um, and that's, that's making sure that you're making those payments on time. Now, more items on a credit card statement to look out for is a credit counseling statement. That's gonna give just further explanation. Um, notice of interest rate changes. That's if your interest rate is changing at all and these notices are sometimes in small, small font, small lettering. So these are things that you should be paying attention to regularly when you're making those payments, transactions or account activities. You wanna make sure that any transaction that is on there is something that you initiated. You don't wanna make you want to make sure that you're eyeballing that closely to make sure that it all looks clear to you and you took out those charges. Your finance charges, your annual fee, and your interest totals will also be there. And these are good ways to figure out how much you're paying every month in order to use those cards. After a while, you're going to realize you are spending a good amount of money in order to use these credit cards. Um, your interest charge calculation, and that is how they're coming up with how you're paying your interest rate. Now, um, steep steps to managing your credit card. Keep good records, check statements for mistakes, pay on time, and at least the minimum due, 
every month, um, understand the impact of different payment strategies. I think we talked about um, just paying on cards that have the lower interest rate or doing the snowball method and how if you are initiating one of those strategies, how that's translating into your payments and to your balance and try to limit what you owe compared to your credit limit. Um, you definitely want to keep within that 30%. Um, you don't, if you have a thousand dollar limit or whatever your limit is, even if you're using up to 80%, that can look like you're maxing out your card. It doesn't, when you're maxing out your card, that doesn't give your creditor a good sense that you are very responsible with your credit. So you want to make sure that you are keeping it at a low utilization rate. And um, so just be very careful with that. Now, how payments are applied to your balance. If you're only making the minimum payment, creditors choose, the creditor is going to choose how to apply to that to your balance. Often it's applied to a portion of the balance with the lowest interest rate. Now amounts over minimum payments generally apply to a portion of the balance with the highest interest rate. So you definitely want to be more aggressive than just paying your minimum balance every month. You want to ultimately pay as much of that bill off as you can every month. Set up a strategy where you're, you, you can set aside a specific amount of money every month, but be aggressive to pay that down as much as you can, if at all possible. It will take you a very long time after all the interest if you're only pay, making minimum payments, especially if you use the entire limit of that credit card. Your key takeaway here is credit cards can be convenient, but manage them carefully to keep costs down and to avoid damaging damage to your credit. All right. We discussed a lot in this video. The things are you want to look at your credit cards as a financial tool and you want to find out how that's going to help you bring up your credit score. Um, you also want to find out how it can also assist you. But remember, it's not free money. You have to be responsible when using that credit card. and. Um, just be aware that it is a reflection and it is a history of how successful you are with paying paying back debt that you're taking on. So now it's time to take action. What it, Go ahead and ask yourself, what will I do? How will I do it? And will I share with my, my plan with anyone? And if so, who? So if you're needing further help and just trying to understand credit cards, and the best way to use them, even creating a strategy, you can always give us a call here at Foundation Communities. You can give us a call and talk to one of our financial coaches who would love to help you get some more insight on using credit cards responsibly. Give us a call at 737-717-4000 and, um, and you can go ahead and book an appointment. Well, my name's Chris, thanks for listening. To this video. Hopefully you have a little bit more information about using credit cards responsibly. Um, we're here to assist you, so always feel free to reach out. Have a good day.